In our last video, we showcased the build of our Kingfisher Mark II aircraft as part of our attempt to break the Guinness World Record for the fastest jet-powered model aircraft. In this video, we will walk you through three months of ground tests in preparation for the long-awaited maiden flight. Since September, we've been desperate to get Kingfisher in the air, working most weekends around our full-time engineering jobs. Unfortunately, things have taken longer than planned, so we're having to record this at Christmas from a number of different places in the country, so I apologise if this video isn't quite as polished as normal. We ended the last video with a completed mechanical assembly, so now it's time to tackle the electrical integration. We've opted to remove the landing gear, as this provides us about 40% more fuel capacity. And also by removing the front landing gear, we were able to move the ECU from on top of the inlet in a really unaerodynamic position to inside of the nose. This significantly reduced the size of the camera fairing on the inlet. I went about modifying our electrical harness, but now we're faced with a new challenge. How on earth do we fit the ECU, flight controller, batteries, power distribution boards, telemetry radio, GPS, and airspeed sensor, all inside this very, very tight space in the nose, alongside all of their wiring. While Josh shrunk the electronics down, I made some changes to the CAD, starting with the inlet, which includes a housing for our video transmitter and some knacker ducts for cooling. The wing fuselage interface was found to be a key weakness during the build. So I remade the aluminium skeleton to contain the protruding steel rods, which slide into the carbon fiber tubes in the wings. These provide a much greater contact area while maintaining repairability. Next, we moved our attention to the launcher. Kingfisher Mark II is heavier and has a higher takeoff speed than Kinglet, so we had to beef up our catapult. We doubled the bungee stiffness and the length, and this gave us four times as much energy. But since the bungee now carries 600 newtons of load, we had to add a pulley with a two to one ratio to make pulling it back easier and safer. We designed a new cart to fit the larger aircraft, which also included a heat shield to prevent the hot aircraft from sticking to it. Just like the previous design, the aircraft slots into the cart and the bungee fastens to the front. Once pulled back, the cart is attached to a ground anchor using a snap shackle and then the pulley is disconnected. To test the aircraft, we designed a dummy aircraft of equal size and weight to Kingfisher Mark II. This uses a simple 3D printed design glued together with carbon fibre rods and filled with sand to match the Kingfisher's weight and centre of gravity. To keep things simple, we didn't add a powertrain, but we did add two manually driven servos to control the aircraft's orientation. All that was left to do was to test it. Yep. It worked! Yeah. 
Oh, it actually flies really nice. First time being able to fly on the stick myself. And feel it. And feel it. It's CFG feels really good. And it's, yes, you just very sensitive in roll. But with a little bit of tuning now, we can we know to reduce these more. And um, yeah, really happy. After two successful launches, we were happy that the catapult worked. So we turned our attention over to the engine test. We wanted to keep the setup for the test as close to the real flight as possible. So we conducted the static fire on the launcher. This allowed us to further validate our startup procedure and also test the structure under higher temperatures. There we go. Static fire testing proved the operation of both the fuel system and the remote engine start sequence. Additionally, they gave us the opportunity to test the failsafe mechanisms, such as the engine kill switch, which are necessary in order to abort the flight. Furthermore, we tested and checked the servo control and the FPV system was all functioning as we were concerned about potential interference and the high temperatures. We found that we had an endurance of around 3 minutes, which was what we needed to perform a safe flight. Over the next month, we redesigned the nose to better fit the avionics, which included shrinking the air trap and adding a second hatch, which includes a window for monitoring this. The interface between the nose and fuselage was a key weak spot, so I reinforced this with three carbon fiber rods, while a steel ballast was installed into the nose to match the kinglet's center of gravity. Whilst these mechanical changes were going on, I took the opportunity to tackle the avionics bay, given how many components were crammed into such a small space. I removed the RFD telemetry radio and replaced it with a TBS Crossfire Nano Diversity receiver. This also provided the additional benefits of it being plug and play and able to integrate with our existing antenna setup. We then went about trimming the wires to their optimal length. And finally, finally, the hatch would close. I turned my focus to the autopilot and specifically what controller games we'd be using for the maiden flight. During the summer when we flew Kinglet, we did a little bit of auto-tune flying based on the default autopilot games. And the result of this was that we actually detuned uh, the default games just a little bit. Kingfisher is heavier and has slower servos than Kinglet, and therefore I would expect it to need a higher gain than Kinglet did. So the result of this should be a more sluggish, but therefore, in theory, safer response. But our plan is to launch in manual, assess the open loop response of the aircraft, and then switch to fly by wire A uh, and assess the response there, obviously bailing back to manual if necessary. We were desperate to fly Kingfisher before Christmas. 
but the weather was not on our side, amongst other things. Being limited to weekends was challenging, and we saw three flight opportunities come and go. But finally, in mid-December, the weather cleared and we went to the field for Kingfisher's maiden flight. We set up the launcher and tested it with the dummy for good measure. Launch. My God. Oh God, that's not flying today. But to our dismay, the dummy aircraft wouldn't launch. We tried several times, sustaining more and more damage on the cart until it was completely unusable. With the catapult unproven, we had no choice but to postpone. Upon further analysis, the hook on the underside of the aircraft was damaged, causing it to not sit properly in the cart and that's why the cart wasn't launching off the runway like we'd previously seen. We've replaced this now with an aluminium hook for future flights, as well as reinforcing the cart with a metal chassis, which should increase its longevity. To try and salvage the day, we reverted to a static fire. But to our surprise, we couldn't get the engine to start either. After a lot of troubleshooting, the issue seems to be a combination of cold weather, the fuel system not being properly primed, and the batteries not being able to output enough current during the start when it's cold. It's a shame that the engine is so sensitive to these conditions, but it won't be a showstopper. We've now tested all of Kingfisher's subsystems independently. At the start of Jan, we'll be back at the field for the next flight attempt, and we'll keep going to the field on most weekends until we're able to get that flight. So, stay tuned for the flight video, thanks for watching, and have a very happy new year.